Good morning and welcome to Ascension. Today we celebrate Ash Wednesday. All the music can be found in the worship aid. Our gathering song is Ashes. Please rise.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome everyone to our celebration of Ash Wednesday. This time had to, pr to begin our, uh, this holy season of Lent, uh, to prepare our hearts for the coming season of Easter, uh, and to look forward to a better life uh, more fully in Christ. A few things will be different today. We'll get to the distribution of ashes uh, later, but we will not have the penitential rite because of the ashes. Uh, those take the place. Uh, our response to our intercessions is different. A loving God, a merciful God, uh, hear our prayer. Something like that, I think. It's in the worship faith. It's in the worship faith. <laughs> and... There was something else, but now I forget. But it is good to be here. It's good to be together uh, and to pray for this holy season. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting, this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let's now be seated and listen to the Word of God. A reading from the book of Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart, not your garments, and return to the Lord our God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing offerings and libations for the Lord, your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priest the minister of the, of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the people, Where is their God? When the Lord was stirred to concern for his land, he took pity on his people. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, we made him, we made him to this, for our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin so that he might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I heard you. On the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is the very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care to perform righteous deeds. Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. When you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you. They have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, sisters and brothers, welcome to Lent 2020.1. 
in a certain way, we have been living uh, a life of penance and uh, abstinence and, uh, and fasting for quite some time. Beginning almost this time last year, the word corona, coronavirus, and COVID began rampantly spreading around the world along with the virus and the fear that went with it. And from there, we uh, went into a great period of uncertainty. And that period really has not uh, ended. It has changed, but it has really not ended. Many people were reflecting about March, April of last year that that, that had been the lentiest Lent that anyone had ever Lented. Well, that Lent hasn't really ended. It continued through Easter and into ordinary time and continues today. And yet, while it continues in the sense that we still face the uncertainties of this world and all that it holds, we are challenged to look at this Lent anew. As we are challenged every year, no matter how many Lents we have experienced, that we return to it time and again as one who is thirsty returns to a well to drink once more. We cannot, nor will we ever, exhaust all of the spiritual benefits that are available to us during the season of Lent. That is why we return time and time again. If we ever believe that we have exhausted those benefits, though that healing water of God's grace and mercy, then, well, we are greater than that which we are seeking. And so we return, we uh, repent, and we believe. The reality that we focus on these words returning and repenting, especially that return this year, has a lot of, of, of force, uh, especially in my, uh, in my mind, that we are called upon to return, to return, to turn around, to recognize that so much of our lives become focused on something other than Christ. And we are challenged to turn back towards that. This year in particular, it may be turning away from fear or anxiety of certainty over how this should work or how it should be, and rather return to Christ. There is a lot of advice on how to do Lent. And oftentimes that advice is irksome uh, to your pastor. Uh, particularly, and you may have heard it at some point, that what you should do during Lent is give up something that will change you and you'll stick with. Don't give up chocolate, they'll say, because you'll just go back to eating chocolate. Give up chocolate if that's what God is calling you to do. This particular Lent is not about becoming perfect. It is about being perfected. We are uh, damaging, in a sense, the uh, importance of Lent by thinking that it's a time where we are looking for self-improvement. To give up something in particular that is bad so that we no longer do it. It is more of a time to look at those things in our lives where we may have a slight disordered affection for and therefore gain more mastery over our inclinations. And so in that way, giving up chocolate or something that you will return to actually has a great benefit because it helps us to clear our sight and look at that which is most important. Not about improving ourselves, but being improved by God's grace. There was a, uh, an individual that I ran across on social media the other day, and she 
had this wonderful analogy, and I'll share it with you. She too was reflecting on how there's a lot of advice out there around what to do for Lent. And she implored us to look at it as a 40-day retreat with your spouse. A 40-day retreat with your spouse. Now, it's actually more than 40 days. It's 40 days of fasting, but not to get into all of that. A 40-day retreat with your spouse. For women, this may be a bit more comfortable. For men, it may be a bit less comfortable. And yet we are challenged by this analogy, as all analogies are, imperfect, and yet they point to something. God desires to be our everything. He's the only one who can. He's the only one who ever will. And we return to that time and again. This Lent holds particular importance, and yet it's also like any other Lent before or will be again. An opportunity to look to the one in our lives who is our everything. To pray through Jesus Christ to our Father in heaven to restore us to who we truly are. The ashes that we will wear this day are a reminder, most importantly, not that we have sinned, not that we have a need for forgiveness. Those are there. But the importance of the ashes at the, is that at the end of the day, they are washed away that we are more than those ashes. Let us look to these ashes this Lent, this year, as an opportunity to remember who we are in the eyes of our Father in heaven. As I mentioned, the distribution of ashes will be a bit different this year. We will form a, a center line, come down the center aisle. I'll be in the middle. You'll return to your pews using the side aisles. Um, I will pray over the ashes, sprinkle the water, pray the formula over you all, and then once you come forward, the ashes will be sprinkled on top of your head without me saying anything which I think is going to be the oddest part about it. So if don't wait for me to say something because I've been directly told not to. So I, I pray the, the uh, repent and uh, believe in the gospel over you all. Come forward and receive your ashes in silence. Let us stand. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, Lend your merciful ear to our prayers, and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes, that, as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the paschal mystery of your Son, through Christ our Lord. Repent 
and believe in the gospel. Trusting in the Lord's mercy, let us bring before him our prayers and petitions for ourselves and for the world as we cry out, loving God, have mercy. For the church throughout the world, may the Lord lead us into a deeper conversion of heart through the practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Let us pray to the Lord, loving God, have mercy. For those who govern, may the Spirit guide them in their decision-making for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, have mercy. For children throughout the world, especially those who are in need of food, shelter, and care, may the Lord protect and guard them. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, have mercy. For all members of Ascension Parish, May the Lord help us preserve, persevere in our Lenten commitments in the face of distractions and temptations. Let us pray to the Lord, loving God, have mercy. For Al Goulet, for whom this Mass is being celebrated, and for all the faithful departed, may the Lord's perpetual light shine upon them and bring them everlasting joy. 
Let us pray to the Lord, loving God, have mercy. For the prayers in our book of intentions and for those which you hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord, loving God, have mercy. Hear these prayers we bring before you, O Lord, and answer them in accordance with your merciful and divine will. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginnings of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your son who lives and reigns forever and ever Amen. the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for through bodily fasting you restrain our faults raise up our minds and bestow both virtue and its rewards through christ our lord to him the angels praise your majesty dominions adore and powers tremble before you heaven and the virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim, worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaho, Veni sancheria terra gloria tua, alba in Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis.
It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offering and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. Your Son, who alone just handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake, the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. And we eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death of the Lord until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another some sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you, that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say the word, my and my soul shall be healed. Bring us 
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fasting may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Reminder, if you've not picked up some Lenten resources in the back, there's plenty to, uh, to go around, and so uh, please make use of those. Our uh, fish fries and uh, Stations of the Cross, along with reconciliation available during Stations, uh, start this Friday. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty, and by your mercy may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. To the desert of